Okay everyone, it's Voodoo51292 and welcome to the official game review um, for the campaign only of Homefront. And it's important to say that, that this is a review of the campaign only. Um, I did not play the multiplayer, I could not, because I rented this game and therefore I did not have the online code in order to play the game uh, on online. So this is a review of campaign only for Homefront, alright? And obviously that means that my rating, my rating at the end is going to be solely based off of campaign, alright? Um, so basically, um, to give you a little intro into what Homefront is, it is an FPS game. It's basically your standard war game, um, similar to like a Call of Duty type of mold or something like that. The plot is pretty interesting. Basically, the whole world is going through a bunch of problems. Uh, and at the center of it all, basically, North Korea, um, Kim, Kim Jong-il's son comes to power ruling over North Korea, he just, uh, he begins military campaigns into surrounding Asian countries and uniting them all under one uh, greater Korean Republic. Um, and basically they, they grow into this big superpower and basically they hit America with an EMP bomb and go in there and basically begin occupying the US and taking it over and basically, you know, brutally treating their citizens and things like that. Um, you know, basically slaughtering them, putting them in mass graves and stuff like that. Pretty pretty awful stuff. But And, uh, you know, your character is part of the um, a guerrilla warfare style resistance force in America that is trying to fight off, um, you know, the Koreans, but they're not really, you know, an army. They're not part of the army. They're like a guerrilla resistance force. Um, so that's basically the, the plot of the game. It's pretty interesting. Um, so, Overall, you know, first first off the bat, what did I think of the game? Um, I, you know, I enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was pretty fun. Um, it was extremely short, though, about a four-hour campaign. Um, and but you know, it it was pretty fun. Like I said, the the plot is interesting. Um, you know, it's you know fighting on your own soil, um, and uh, you know it's set in the near future, so it's it's something possible people could see coming with the way North Korea has been a threat now to us as of late, so, um, you know, it's interesting from that standpoint, um, and, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed it, I thought it was pretty good, it was nothing that was, you know, epic or mind-blowing or anything like that, uh, it was just a pretty, pretty good, solid, you know, shooting game, um, so anyway, let's break it down now into your your pros and cons of the Homefront campaign. Um, so let's start with pros. Again, like I said, the story's interesting. It's, um, you know, it kind of could be realistic if you think of worst case scenario in the future. Um, and there are, you know, there are interesting gameplay elements, um, I have to say, you know. Uh, there's a variety of locations that you go to, and, um, you know, the end of the game is basically an epic battle. I'm not going to, you know, ruin it for you, but it's, it's pretty cool. Um, you know, you go from small uh, area clearing to a giant epic battle at the end. Um, so it's pretty diverse. You get to, you know, do a couple of different things with machines. You get to control basically a computerized tank where you basically have a remote and you can tell it where to shoot and it'll drive around and basically rape whatever you tell it to hit. Um, so that's pretty fun. Um, you know, there's different things. You know, there's a helicopter level. So, you know, it, it's a pretty good variety of areas. It's pretty uh, good gameplay, I have to say. Uh, the controls are exactly the same as Call of Duty. Um, so, obviously, they are easy to know if you play a Call of Duty game. They're the exact same. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much your standard war game. Uh, it was fun. It was a little bit more fun than some of the other different war game campaigns I've played. Um, it wasn't really as static and bland. It was a little bit more exciting. Um, you are with a, a, a team throughout the game, um, which is pretty, which is pretty neat. And uh, another thing I actually found neat, which I commented on a few times during the gameplay. Obviously, Homefront needed a lot of money, okay, to really kickstart and get going. So what they did was basically took on a bunch of sponsors, um, real world sponsors. Um, you know, who obviously paid them to put their product in the game. And 
Um, they actually put a lot of real world companies, stores, products in the game. So for instance, there is a level with a giant TigerDirect.com warehouse. Now that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense considering TigerDirect.com is a web store, okay, but that was their sponsor so they put a giant, it's like a Best Buy and you fight through that. Um, there's white castles uh, around. Um, you'll walk in and there'll be like a full throttle vending machine. Um, standing there, a NOS vending machine, they obviously like their energy drinks. Um, there's a Hooters and uh, you know the signs are all obviously real and everything else. And some people may complain about that but honestly for me that was actually a pro in the game and here's why. You know, you're fighting on your own home soil in America against the Koreans. It's supposed to be a patriotic game and stuff. But when you're walking around and you see these real places like White Castles and Hooters and stuff on the street and you're fighting around and through, it really gives you an authentic feel that, hey, yeah, you're actually battling this out guerrilla warfare style on the streets of America, you know, through these these small neighborhoods and, and you know, and, 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 you know, streets and things like that. It gives you an authentic feeling and you know, for me, I like that over, say, you know, just burger joint or whatever, you know, the generic whatever restaurant they put in the game or anything. Um, the fact that they actually had real world sponsorship in the game was actually pretty cool because, again, I thought it gave it a really kind of authentic feel that, hey, yeah, you know, this is America. These are small towns with, you know, white castles and stuff, and we're fighting through the streets, um, you know, for our, for our personal freedom. So. I thought that was an actually pretty cool plus to the game, so, um, yeah, those are my pros, um, just kind of generalized, but, um, just a pretty good solid game. Now, moving on to the cons, um, one that's a big one is your AI, your, your companions in the game, um, their AI is, is, is just, it's terrible, it's, it's kind of abominable, there's a few times if you watch my playthrough where, a teammate of mine will be walking right in front of me, a Korean will walk right past them, they'll walk right past each other, and my teammate does nothing. He walks right past them, and the Korean walks right past him, and then starts shooting me, and my teammate just stands there and does nothing. Um, sometimes in like these stores and stuff, you're, one of your teammates will go right, and you're like, okay, well he's flanking on the right, let me go left, and you know, we'll, we'll cover each other's backs. Well, you know, you go around left, he goes around right, but he doesn't cover you and doesn't shoot anything. Um, so basically, you'll you'll go left while he goes right, and when you go left, you get shot in the back um, and die while your teammate stands here and does nothing and doesn't cover you. Uh, that's pretty annoying. Um, so yeah, pretty much the same useless AI. It's it's pretty much it's in every game. It's really annoying. Maybe one day people will figure out how to actually program realistic AI companions, but I haven't played a game where they really have yet, so maybe I just haven't found the right game, but this game definitely isn't. They're pretty dumb. Um, that's just bottom line. Um, you know, so there's that. Um, the, 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 the way you, you know, lose health is a bleeding out effect, just like Call of Duty. And it happens really fast. You, you have really not a lot of damage threshold in this game. If you start getting hit, um, you die pretty quickly. Um, so a few times I got stuck in some bad situations to try to get out of them and I couldn't because I would die very quickly. Um, and you know, it's really not that far, that not that bad because the game itself is really not a hard game. But you know, when you have those problems I talked about, like when you try to go left when your teammate goes right and you know he doesn't cover you and you start getting hit, and you can't recover from it because you die very quickly. So you know, make sure you remember that when you play that you can't you really can't take a whole lot of chances in this game because you're going to die pretty quickly if you do. Um, so that's kind of a con. Um, and then obviously the biggest one is the length of the game. It's only four hours long. Um, and, you know, it's just... Uh, I'm going to hop up here and sit down because I'm being lazy. But, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like... It's four hours long and, you know... I believe they've already announced a home front too, and it's just like, you know, you've been working on this for so long, don't you think maybe that you could have, um, you know, put a little bit more content in the game. I'm going to sit up here. I should probably lower this and zoom in a little bit so you can actually see me. 
Um, but it's like, you know, couldn't you put a little bit more content into the game? You know, it's... They were been working on it since 08, so three years, and you think that they would do a little bit better. But, and there's the, there's the question, you know, well, does that justify a $60 release, you know? Well, that's a tough one, because it is a new IP, obviously. It's not, you know, a... It's not like a Halo 3 ODST or anything like that, which was a which was a ripoff. It's, you know, it's a it's a new you know franchise, and it's like the old Call of Duty games. They were like four hour long campaigns, like more Modern Warfare 2, but their multiplayer experience was so good that it did justify the release. You know, I don't know about the multiplayer. Like I said, I haven't played it. I've seen it played. It looks interesting. Would I pay $60 to play this game? No. But with somebody else? Probably. You know, it just depending on whether or not they like the multiplayer. I've heard that, you know, a lot of things that people really enjoy the multiplayer in this game. So if you enjoy it that much, then maybe, yeah, you would go pay 60 bucks for it. You know, I don't know. But, um, but anyway, for me, the length of the game was a con. I wouldn't pay $60 to play a four-hour campaign um, and a little bit of multiplayer, but... You know, some people would, and that's their right. So, uh, you know, it's hard to say whether or not that's justifiable. But, uh, but anyway, um, so after all that, time to wrap it up, give my rating um, of the game, and uh, my final thoughts. And uh, for this game, you know, again, it was okay. All right, it wasn't great. It wasn't mind blowing. Um, you know, it wasn't, like, the greatest game I've ever played. It wasn't really even, you know. <laughs> like, it, basically, it was okay. It was a decent game. It was a fun game to play in one day. I sat there and beat it all on Saturday, and it was a fun way to kill time with the campaign. It wasn't anything spectacular, and it wasn't anything that really was like, wow, this is going to be a great franchise for years to come. It was just, it was a war game. That's what it was. And so... Um, honestly, I'm debating about it. I think I'm going to give the game a 6.5. Um, and again, this is a rating of the campaign only. I would say a 6.5. Um, the only thing that's keeping me from like a, you know, I actually revise that. I have to drop the score. Instead of a 6.5, I'm going to give it an even 6, and here's why. I have to drop that half point because of the length. I can't give it a 6.5 because the game is four hours long. You know, if it was a six hour long game, something like that, maybe it would warrant the 6.5, but it's not a five because it's not completely, utterly bland. It, it is a little bit different. Like I said, the story is a little bit more interesting. I like some of the gameplay elements. I thought they were pretty good. Um, and I did enjoy it, you know, for the most part, but again, four hours long. So the 6.5, I can't justify. So I'm going to have to drop the campaign rating to a six, even, and, uh, you know, here's the bottom line. If you're looking for a good time killer to play, like one day you want to sit there and just play, you know, a four-hour game or something to kill some time, definitely this game's worth a rental. Um, and if you want to play the multiplayer, you know, you can buy the you can buy the $10 code uh, and play some of the online because I've heard it's pretty good. But one last thing before we cut, if you do want to see footage of the uh, Homefront multiplayer, be sure to go to DSP Gaming's website and... Um, DSP Gaming's channel, I'm sorry, on YouTube, and he's got plenty of footage of himself playing Homefront multiplayer, and uh, actually tomorrow, Friday, April, what is the date? April, what date? April 15th tomorrow, I'm sorry, tax day, is um, DSP's going to be playing online with the fans Homefront tomorrow, so there's pretty, plenty of footage on his channel of the uh, of the multiplayer for Homefront, if you do want to go watch footage of that. Um, and that's it for the Homefront review. Uh, a 6.0 for the Homefront campaign. Worth a rental if you want to kill some time. So I'm Voodoo5Tall92, thanks for watching. And uh, be sure to watch for more of my game reviews coming uh, your way in the future.